Hello and welcome. Welcome to Fordham Manor Church's Thursday evening time of devotion. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. Good to see you tonight. Hi, Carmenia. Thank you. Bless you as well. Glad to be here with you all tonight. This is a good day. This is the day that God has made and we rejoice and we're glad in it. Hola, Sister Margie. Hello, Edward. Welcome. Welcome to Facebook Live. This is um, my third opportunity to share with us and I'm feeling a little more comfortable. Um, just wanna give uh, folks some time to log in and once you have joined us, go ahead and please uh, send a message. I'm, I'm not a digital native, so forgive me. Um, I, when I end Facebook Live, I see that multiple people have posted messages, so I'm going to be more careful to track with you all tonight. Welcome, Deacon Yolanda. Good to see you. We have people logging in. We'll wait a, about two more minutes to make sure we have um, everybody who would like to be together tonight in this virtual room. I'm here uh, at the end of a long day, um, but I have been looking forward to being together with you all as I've been listening to scripture um, and we're going to get to do more of that tonight. If you um, don't have your Bibles handy, you might want to take a few seconds down to grab it. Uh, we're going to be listening together to Exodus chapters 6 through 8 tonight. And if while you're on, um, you have prayer requests, go ahead and put those into the chat room as well. So I, as I have shared um, with you over the last few times I've been on Facebook Live, I am developing my spiritual discipline of listening to reading the Bible. Um, the Bible is the most influential book in history. It explores the big questions of life and death and the human struggle. And one, I've always been fascinated with the Bible, even uh, before I um, fully uh, surrendered my full life to Christ. I was fascinated with the Bible because of all the wonderful stories. I read the Bible as story, and it is the, the story. It shows um, how God speaks and tells the story of what God is doing for all of humanity. Um, and it has Jesus as the centerpiece. So I w my imagination was captured uh, growing up in theater, in high school. I, I was always interested in a good story. And you'll find some of the most important stories about the human dilemma in the Bible. Good evening, Reverend Ron. Welcome. Good to see you. Good to be, good to be here with you tonight. Um, some of you are working. And um, we thank all of our essential workers, those of us who are working in hospital or healthcare situations. Nancy, we're praying for you tonight. Any of you who have been working in any of the essential places, um, we thank God for your service. So I'm gonna go ahead and pray for us and then share a little more context for this public reading of scripture tonight. God, we, um, we thank you for your sons and daughters uh, who are giving their lives away, who are demonstrating your love for all humanity by serving, by putting themselves at risk. Uh, we ask that you will protect them, that you will um, cover them beneath the shadow of your wing as you promised to do in Psalm 91, that uh, you would keep the pestilence far from them um, and that you would bring them home safely again at the end of their uh, duties for the day. 
We ask that you would be present to us tonight as we together listen to your word. Speak to us, Holy Spirit, your servants are listening. So um, if, any, if any of you are interested in, in deepening your practice of scripture or of listening to scripture and reading scripture, I invite you to go to prsi.org. They host a public reading of scripture with hundreds of people all over the, the world, actually. People from all over the world sign up. Uh, they get a password protected Zoom invite and it um, you can be together and just hear God's word. I've really um, had some remarkable breakthroughs as I've been listening together. And I'm very interested in Fordham Manor becoming a host site for public reading of scripture. So if anyone is interested in joining me in that, please leave a message in the chat as well. And, and here's why. Um, here's what public reading of scripture is not. It's not a curriculum. It's not focused on the teacher or the teaching. It's not a short daily devotional. It's not private listening to an audio Bible and all of those things are important. Um, but what it is, is communal. You listen with the same group of people, four or 40 or 400, you develop relationship together centered around the story of God's word. It's regular, so your group decides to meet once or twice a week for a minimum of 20 minutes. And it's an extended reading of whole chapters. So we are accustomed to just taking bite-sized bite chunks of scripture, listening um, to verses or short readings out of context. But public reading of scripture invites us to sit down at the table and enjoy an entire meal together. So we hear um, how Old Testament and New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs interact, come together to create this really wonderful meal. Um, it's, it really is a blessing. And, and here's why it's so important. Um, as we listen publicly, communally, we get to know more about who God is, we get to know who we are, and we get to know who we are called to be in community. Um, and so tonight, um, it, it's been my um, burden to decrease as I invite us to listen to God's word together, because I think the word of God, and we believe this, that it's powerful and alive, and the Holy Spirit speaks to us specifically, directly, and communally, and will say more than um, my words um, or my commentary can reflect. Um, so we're going to be together starting with, so the structure for public reading of scripture includes a psalm at the beginning, a psalm at the end, and sandwiched in between those psalms is an Old Testament reading and a New Testament reading. Tonight, we are not going to include the New Testament reading, but I'll refer you to it. Um, so we'll have both the Psalms and then the Old Testament reading first. <clears throat> Exodus 6 through 8. And I'll read that to begin with. And so let's just prepare our hearts to hear uh, what God says. Um, and I invite you to, as you listen, ponder the question of, is God good in this season of crisis? Is God good in this season of crisis? Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun does not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. 
So now I'm going to turn my attention to a reading of Exodus chapters 6 through 9. And you can either listen um, as I read or you can follow along in your own uh, text. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Some of you may have different translations. Um, so if it's too bumpy for you to follow, just listen. Uh, and just contextually, um, the, the first quarter of Exodus is, as we all know, um, the children of Israel have left um, uh, Canaan and they've settled in Egypt. Joseph has become a second in command to Pharaoh. Um, and they, so he has essentially saved all of J Jacob's children. And then many hundreds of years later, Joseph dies and oppression begins. And so here we find that Moses <clears throat> has um, taken flight because he has murdered someone and he has gone off into the desert and um, he is in preparation to become God's man for rescuing uh, God's people again. And he has heard from the Lord, received instructions, and now he is on his way back. Then the Lord said to Moses, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. So Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses because of the anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, go in. Tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses spoke before the Lord saying, the children of Israel have not heeded me. How then shall Pharaoh heed me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a command for the children of Israel and for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of their father's houses, the sons of Reuben and the sons of Simeon, these are the names of the sons of Levi, the sons of Gershon, the sons of Merari. These are the families of Levi according to their generations. Now Amram took for himself Jochebed, his father's sister, as wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amram were 137. The sons of Ezar were Korah, Nephik, and Zikri. And the sons of Uziel were Mishael, Elzaphon, and Zithri. Aaron took to himself Elisheba, daughter of Amminadab, sister of Nashan, as wife. And she bore him Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And the sons of Kor were Asir, Elkanah, and Abiasaph. These are the families of the Korathites. Eleazar, Aaron's son, took for himself one of the daughters of Putiel, his wife, and she bore him Phineas. 
These are the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites, according to their families. These are the same Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, according to their armies. These are the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are the same Moses and Aaron. And it came to pass on the day that the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I am the Lord. Speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to you. But Moses said before the Lord, behold, I am of uncircumcised lips and how shall Pharaoh heed me? Chapter seven. So the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you as God to Pharaoh and Aaron, your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you and Aaron, your brother shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Egypt, send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not heed you so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Then Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded them, so they did. And Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, when Pharaoh speaks to you saying, show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and they did so just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt. They could also, and so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods and Pharaoh's heart grew hard and he did not heed them as the Lord had said. So the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hard. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning when he goes out to the water and you shall stand by the river's bank to meet him. And the rod which was turned to a serpent you shall take in your hand and you shall say to him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me to you saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. But indeed, until now, you would not hear. Thus says the Lord, by this you shall know I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that are in the river shall die. The river shall stink, and the Egyptians will loathe to drink the water of the river. Then, the Lord spoke to Moses, say to Aaron, take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, and over all their pools of water, that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in buckets of wood and pitchers of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded. So he lifted up the rod and struck the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died, the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river. So there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Then the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments and Pharaoh's heart grew hard and he did not heed them as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither was his heart moved by this. So all the Egyptians dug all around the river for water to drink because they could not drink the water of the river. And seven days passed after the Lord had struck the river. Chapter eight. And the Lord spoke to Moses, go to Pharaoh, say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go 
that they may serve me. But you refuse to let them go. Behold, I will smite all your territory with frogs. So the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house, into your bedroom, on your bed, into the houses of your servants, on your people, into your ovens and into your kneading bowls. And the, the frogs shall come up on you, on your people and all your servants. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people. And I will let the people go that they may sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, Accept the honor of saying, when I shall intercede for you, for your servants and for your people to destroy the frogs from you and your households, that they may remain in the river only. So he said, tomorrow. And he said, let it be according to your word that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. And the frog shall depart from you from your houses, from your servants, and from your people. They shall remain in the river only. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs, which he had brought against Pharaoh. So the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died, of the, died out of the houses, out of the courtyards, and out of the fields. They gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not heed them as the Lord had said. So the Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron, stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land so that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth and it became lice on man and beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice on man and beast. Then the magicians, oh, wow. What happened? Hi friends, sorry about the technical glitches. Uh, I was just getting to the good part. It must have been really good. I burned up the limes and it ended the video. So if you are still here, I just want to finish this last part of chapter eight of Exodus, and then I'll end with the reading of our Psalm for tonight. Chapter eight, verse 20. And the Lord said to Moses, rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand. And in that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. I will make a difference between my people and your people. 
tomorrow this this sign shall be and the lord did so thick swarms of flies came into the house of pharaoh into the house of his servants and into all the land of egypt the land was corrupted because of the swarms of flies then pharaoh called for moses and aaron and said go go sacrifice to your god in the land and moses said it is not right to do so for we would be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, then, they, then will they not stone us? We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he will command us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away, intercede for me. Then Moses said, indeed, I am going out from you and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, from his servants and from his people. But let Pharaoh not deal deceitfully anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord and the Lord did according to the word of Moses. He removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people, not one remain. But Pharaoh hardened his heart at the time, at this time also, neither would he let the people go. I want to take a pause and for whoever is still with us on live, go ahead and take a few minutes and uh, write down a word or a phrase or an image, anything that um, listening to Exodus chapters 8 or chapters 6 through 8 has brought to the forefront of your mind. And I invite you to continue reading Exodus, um, reading through uh, the rest of the drama of uh, Pharaoh's hardening of his heart and the resilience of the people, the challenges, Moses's challenge, his fears, um, whatever it is that comes to mind. And I would invite you to think about where is God's goodness seen in the midst of that drama? And I will end um, tonight's public reading of scripture with a reading of Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. I call upon you from the ends of the earth with heaviness in my heart. Set me upon the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. I will dwell in your house forever. I will take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have granted me the heritage of those who fear your name and length of days to the king's life. Let his years extend over many generations. Let him sit enthroned before God forever. Bid love and faithfulness watch over him. So will I always sing the praise of your name and day by day, I will fulfill my vows. This is God's word. Thanks be to God for his word, the living word that helps us to know who God is, helps us to know who we are, and helps us to know who we are called to become. I pray this time has been uh, rewarding for you tonight. If you are interested in participating in more public reading of scripture to feast on a full meal of God's word, I invite you to look up prsi.org, the public reading of scripture website. And if you're interested in establishing a Fordham Manor public reading of scripture community, please uh, text or email me or leave a message in the chat room. Lord, I thank you for this time together and I pray you will bless the reading of your word for both the hearers and the reader, for your glory. Amen. Be well, stay safe. <laughs>